Hello everybody. I've got something interesting. It's the 74HC595 shift register. One of the most generic shift registers there is. This is the one that you should start with. I guess I already jumped a couple steps though. What is a shift register? Is it something unimaginably useful? Well, yes, it is. A shift register lets you effectively control an infinite number of things, so long as you have an infinite number of shift registers. Say you have a microcontroller, like an Arduino, which, just like any other microcontroller that has ever existed, has a limited number of GPIO ports. You also have 100 LEDs that you need to control. What do you do? Change your name and move to Northern Canada? No, because you have 13 shift registers. With these shift registers, you can control all of these LEDs with only three pins on your Arduino. So how do shift registers work? A shift register latches data bit by bit. A typical shift register, such as the one I have, will hold 8 bits. When the controller tells it to, the shift register spits out those 8 bits onto its outputs. You can write to the memory in a shift register without changing what is on the output, and replace the contents of the output with what is in the memory at any time. I will use the 74HC595 as an example, but it is representative of almost all shift registers on the market. The 74HC595 has 16 pins, 8 output pins, 5 control pins, and 2 power pins, and 1 extension pin. This pin is the output enable pin. It turns the outputs on or off, depending on if you give it a high or low value. The line above the label means that it is active low. So if the line is driven low, which means connected to ground, it will turn on the outputs. Tie it to the 5 volt rail and the outputs will turn off. The output memory does not reset when the output turns off. Their states are saved in memory until the output enable pin is driven low again. The SR clear is used to clear the internal memory of the shift register. Since it is active low, it will clear the memory if the pin is driven low. In order for the shift register to work, this pin needs to be tied to the 5 volt rail whenever it is not in use. The VCC pin is the positive voltage, and ground is 0 volts, or ground. The three most important control pins are the SER, R clock, and SR clock pins. I will call the SER pin the data line, and the R clock pin will be the output clock, and the SR clock pin will be the input clock. I'm only renaming them to make it easier to understand. The input clock pin is what shifts data into memory, and the data line is the value that it puts into memory, either a 1 or a 0. Anytime the output clock is triggered, the data in the memory is copied onto the output. I will demonstrate this with a shift register and push buttons. Although the shift registers are normally controlled by microcontrollers, I'm using push buttons for understanding's sake. The push buttons do bounce a bit, actually they bounce a lot, so don't be confused if you see two, three, or even four shifts when I haven't pushed anything that many times. Just keep breathing and pretend like you only saw one shift. I will explain output H prime later. I am also using pull up and pull down resistors which provide just enough current to keep a button from being falsely triggered. These resistors keep pins in an inactive state. If a pin is activated when given power, I have a resistor connecting it to ground. This is called a pull down resistor. If a pin is activated when given ground, I have a pull up resistor connecting it to positive. This way, the buttons can override the effect of a pull down or pull up resistor. If you don't use pull down or pull up resistors, you will get some very funky results. I will hold down the data line button and push the input clock button. This will put a logic value of 1 into the first place in the shift register's memory. The memory samples the data line on the input clock's rising edge. Next, I will push the input clock button without pushing the data line button. This will move logic 1 over and put the logic 0 value in its place. Now I will push the output clock button and the LEDs will light up according to what is in memory. So it will be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. Remember that memory is not cleared when it is copied to the output. This means that you can keep shifting in new bits and produce a cool scrolling effect if you keep pressing the output clock button. Now for how to control more than 8 LEDs. In order to do this you will need more than one shift register hooked together. This is also where the H' output comes in. 
It goes high on the rising edge of the input clock signal when a 1 is shifted into bit 7 of the internal memory, and goes low on the rising edge of the input clock when that bit is shifted into bit 8. The same thing happens for a logic 0, except the H prime output goes low instead of high. When the H prime pin on the first shift register is connected to the data line on the second, and the output clock and the input clocks on the first are connected to those on the second, the two shift registers act exactly as one would, except there are eight more outputs. This is because when the H prime pin on one is connected to the data line on the other, the H prime acts like one of the push buttons, except it is delayed eight clock cycles. The H prime pin puts whatever bit is about to overflow in the first shift register into the first place in the memory of the second shift register. This concept will get easier and easier to think about it the more you play with shift registers. Well, that's shift registers for you. Now do something for me. Like, comment, or even subscribe if you learn from this. Thank you, and shift on over to the next video.